Hello everyone, I'm Zach Peterson and I'm here today to talk to you all about the design rule engine in Flux. Now, Flux is very unique, especially in terms of how its design rule engine works. The design rules in Flux are more than just constraints that prevent you from doing something in the PCB layout. Instead, Flux uses design rules as actual design tools. They set parameters in your design and apply them automatically as you work through through your PCB layout, and that's one of the things that makes Flux so cool. So I'm going to show you how to access objects in the PCB layout and access the design rules, how to set design rules, what happens when you change design rules, and everything that you need to know to get started using design rules in the PCB layout inside Flux. Let's go ahead and get started. So I think the quickest way to learn about the design rule engine in Flux is to actually jump into a project and then you'll be able to see which rules are available to different objects in your PCB layout. So I'm here inside of Flux on screen. I have a uh, project open that I've named Interface Converter and uh, this is exactly as its name suggests, just an interface converter. We have a horizontal pin header here that I've pulled in from uh, the publicly available parts in the library and we've got another one as our output and then we've got a couple chips here, some resistors, and a capacitor. If I go over here to the PCB, you can see this is all laid out and routed. Here in the left side of uh, this panel, uh, you can see here we have a list of objects and then we have another option for rules that gets uh, that becomes visible once you uh, move into the PCB editor. So here in this objects panel, this is where I can select different objects where I want to assign specific design rules. So just for example, here under the net section, if I want, I can select specific traces within a net. And you see as I move down, it highlights them or I can select the entire net. So just as an example of how the design rule engine works, let's say I want to uh, expand all of the, the widths of these traces to a larger value. Normally in most PCB design software programs, what you're going to have to do is manually go through and select all of these traces. Here what I can do in Flux is I can just add a specific design rule. And I do that by clicking this Add button here in the right side of the screen. What I can do is change, let's say, the trace width by assigning the trace width design rule. I can click Add. And once I add this trace width design rule, it's going to populate with the default value. But let's say I change this to 30 mils. Well, what happens is you see here in the PCB layout, it automatically updates all of the objects assigned to the ground net to have a trace width of 30 mils. So that's very convenient because I didn't have to go through and manually select all of these different traces. Now you can see here that let's say I delete these two sections of trace. Let's say I change my ground uh, trace width to 20 mils. Now you'll notice all of the existing traces updated to 20 mils. And so now, if I go back through and complete this route, you'll also see here that it automatically enforces the new section of trace to have that same 20 mil width. So the design rule here isn't just a constraint that flags you when you've done something incorrect. It actually is part of the design tool and it enforces that setting as you build a design. Now some of the design rules are really fundamental. So just for example, when you first start a new PCB inside of Flux, uh, you'll notice here that when I clicked layout, there are some object specific design rules assigned to the actual board itself. So in order to create this custom board shape and to assign this stack up that I have, I have to add uh, these uh, object specific design rules to the layout. So just as an example, one of them that I've added is the stack up design rule. And there are some standard options that are available in here. And you can see I've got uh, several different options based on the layer count that I want to use. The other set of design rules that are here uh, in here that are important, of course, are the size. So I've set the size of this PCB to 0.65 in Y, one inch in X, and that's how I set the size of this PCB layout. I can also translate the entire layout up or down if I want to. So let's say I just want to move this layout five millimeters up from the origin. All I did was just change the position of the PCB layout in this graph. I can just say set this back to zero, zero, and you'll notice it translates the entire layout down so that the center of the board is located at zero, zero. So some of the other things that you can do that are cool, uh, at least in terms of the PCB, like let's say you want to set a curve along the edge of the PCB, there is a design rule for that. So all I do is click edit, 
click add. And then if I scroll down here and I go to corner radius, uh, you'll see some options here for each of the corners on the PCB. So just as an example, let's select top right. If I click add here and I click done, I can then say put in three millimeters. And then as soon as I do that, you see here it enforces this three millimeter uh, curvature uh, on the top right corner in the layout. And then with these check boxes, if I want to disable a design rule, I just check one of these. And what it will do is it will revert to the default value for that particular design rule. And you'll notice here that the system enforces several default values that you'd never have to enter. But if you turn off one of these design rules, it's going to then set the default value for that design rule. And so you can see here for this corner radius, it sets it back to zero when I turn off this design rule. So there's essentially no corner here. Similar thing with the size. Let's say I turn off the size in X and Y. You'll notice that it just reverts to the default board size. And so you can toggle your design rules on and off inside these panels for different objects. Now, the next thing that we can do inside of this PCB layout is we can actually create sets of design rules that have specific application criteria, meaning they can only apply to specific groups of objects inside the PCB layout. So here, by default, we have a single rule set, and that rule set applies to everything. So basically, if I go over here to objects and set design rules, it's going to apply them uh, to everything within that rule set. If I just add a new rule set, what I can do is I can define a scope for where these rules apply. And so that's done here in this selector area. So this is a bit more complex because it requires you to define which rules are gonna apply to which objects in the layout. And so to do that, you'll have to read through the selector syntax here in the docs. So thankfully, there's a little link right here, selector syntax, it's gonna open up this page in the docs. Here, you're gonna be able to uh, see some examples of how to set this selector to uh, point to specific objects in your PCB layout. So that's a very convenient way to only limit that scope of a certain design rule to specific objects that you want to work with in your design. Okay, everybody, so that wraps up our quick intro on the design rule system in Flux. Just remember, they're meant to be used as design tools, not just as constraints. So if you want to see what's possible to set in the design rules, you can read the docs. Also, if you just go in here to edit and add under object specific design rules, you'll see all sorts of options that you can select and start playing with in your projects. So that's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks for following along. Make sure to follow along with all of our tutorials and we'll see you next time.